This video is a short follow-up to the video I posted a couple days ago where, I'm talk where I spoke about how I would approach right shoulder pain. And I showed a picture, and I'm gonna bring it up right now, where I'm showing how the upper trap is pulling the shoulder blade up and the right lat is pulling the right arm down and there's this tug of war going on. And if you see where it says low trap, it's in red and the letters are smaller because I'm trying to point out that the low trap, the muscular influence of the low trap has been compromised. It's no longer engaging the way it needs to be. And if you look at the arrow, the curved arrow, it is showing how the right shoulder, the right collar, uh, the right scapula is coming forward. So it's going into protraction. So that right scapula is coming away from the, mid, from the spine it's coming forward, all right? The right shoulder is coming forward. Okay, just think of that. So that right shoulder is coming forward. The right scapula is winged, is winged, and protracted and coming forward, internally rotated. So uh, what you'll also see now is a perfect example of it. And here in this picture, you see this gentleman is lying flat on the ground. Look how forward his right shoulder is. That is the pattern that I'm talking about. Most people, whether it's that extreme or not, most people are living in that position with that right shoulder at least slightly pulled forward. And when you're in that position, this whole area of your right neck, and I'll bring up that picture of your right, so you see the right SCM, the right scalenes. The right scalenes are pulling up. The right SCM is pulling forward. It's also actually pulling your head forward. Uh, but this whole area gets compressed. And that's what you're seeing in that picture. So what do you know? You know the serratus, right down there, you see that right serratus? That muscle should be stabilizing that scapula to that rib cage and controlling the scapula as you move your right arm. It's, it, it, it provides for efficient rib cage scapular relationships particularly when that arm is moving when the arm moves forward or the rib cage moves back either one that's why that right stray is so important the right low trap along with the right tricep has to stabilize that right scapula back into the proper position so to get it out of that forward position let me bring it up again okay so to to bring that arrow the opposite direction you need that low trap to bring this shoulder, this scapula back into external rotation. But that's not going to happen if your right lat is overactive. That's not going to happen if your upper trap is overactive because your body is lateralized over to the right side. So everything I said in the previous video, you need the left side to pull you over to the left. You need the left abs to compress so that you can get air into the right side. Once air goes into that right side and the rib cage expands on that right side, well, now you have a chance because remember you're compressed in the right, in this upper right lung. The right lung can't even inflate because you're too compressed. Once air goes in there, blows up the rib cage, now the scapula has a chance to sit flat on the rib cage again. So it's, its home base has been reintroduced to it. But now you need the low trap and the tricep to bring that arm back, which would include external rotation of that right shoulder, of the, of the scapula. So that's how it all works together. And then a friend, I posted this on that picture I posted on Instagram. My friend said, so you mean, and she said jokingly, you mean a weighted, you know, shoulder, uh, a weighted, you know, row exercise wouldn't do the trick? Obviously not because you have that big right lat and the big right upper trap that have their influence on that whole region is overwhelming. You have to be able to disengage. You have to get the right lat out of it. You have to get the upper trap out of it. But those are breathing issues. That's the thing. You're not going to disengage the right lat and the right upper trap without air going into that right side. They're overactive because you stopped getting air into that right side because your left side also got too unstable. So you, you got kept over on the right side and everything got compressed and now you can't open it up anymore. So you can't separate, so that's, you cannot row your way out of this. Uh, PRI techniques are designed to get this moving again properly. The techniques 
are designed to inhibit that upper trap, inhibit that right lat, so you can get air into the right side, re-engage the right low trap and the right tricep and the right serratus. That's really what it's all about. So uh, I just thought that this picture, and I'll show it one more time, I just thought this picture was a perfect way to show that this is exactly what I was talking about. This is the diagram. For, this is what you would see with the diagram that I drew. Um, that right shoulder is being stuck forward and he'll have an overactive neck and this gentleman has neck pain, neck tension. He doesn't have shoulder pain, he has neck tension for the exact same reasons. His neck is trying to pull up constantly to get air in to a compressed side that can't get air in.